Hello everyone. This will be the first video in a series of tutorials on game programming in Python. I've been programming games and simulations for many years, and ever since I started posting some of my projects online, I've received a lot of requests for tutorials on how to make similar programs. So finally I gave in. I'm showing examples of projects that I've worked on in the past. These are the kinds of programs that we will be learning to make. You can see that they are very graphical, and most of the time they involve AI, physics, or image processing. These tutorials will be of intermediate difficulty, so you are a good viewer if you have done at least some programming in any language, and you are familiar with basic concepts like variables and functions. The other stuff you will pick up as we go along. In this very first tutorial, we will get all the necessary software set up and run our first program. Then in the next tutorial, we will actually start writing some code, and the first program that we are going to create will be something like Microsoft Paint, so you can basically draw and you can erase. But let's first concentrate on what we need. Okay, so basic setup. We'll be programming in Python. Python is a beautiful, simple language. I love it. Um, we will be using Python 2.6. Now, the only problem here is that they have just released Python 2.7, so you have to go here into releases and click on 2.6.5, and then download one of these. You will probably need this one if you're in Windows. Um, next, we will also need the Pygame library. So go to pygame.org, come to downloads, and you will probably need this one. So Pygame for Python 2.6. So Pygame is basically a library that provides us with a window that we can draw on. So download and install both of those. And finally, I'm providing some starter code that will allow us to plunge directly into the interesting stuff. So download the zip file that contains these three files that I wrote. All links are in the video description. So I use the starter code for every single one of my projects, and we will be using it as well. So basically, every time we start a new project, we will first copy-paste this folder, and then do all the programming inside this file here. Okay, so hopefully you have downloaded this folder called Starter. So let's copy paste it to create our first um, project, call it Tutorial 1, for example. So go inside. I have mentioned that there are three, three files here. Now, we will only be working inside this single file, startercode.py. These other two files we will not be touching, especially Vec2D. We will not be using at all this tutorial. Pygame Helper we will be using, but only indirectly. So let's open up these two files. So most of the programming will go on here in startercode.py. By the way, I'm using Notepad++ as my editor. It's a pretty good one. So you can see that I've already written some stuff in startercode. All of our work will be done here, 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 and here. And this stuff and this stuff we won't touch too much. Now in Pygame Helper, this is a file that I wrote a long time ago. We will not be looking into this file. We will not be changing it ever. So you don't have to worry too much about it. But basically, for those of you that know a little more about programming, Pygame Helper is a class. It contains the main loop, and it calls these functions from the main loop. And basically, starter code extends Pygame Helper class, and then we basically override these methods here. OK, so let's look at what the application does right now. To launch it, you basically just want to come to the folder, and you want to double-click starter code.py. So what happens is that this white window pops up. And when you click it, nothing happens. So nothing basically happens. And to exit, you hit Escape. And that's everything. So let's look at basically how that happened. The init method here is what gets executed when you start the program. So here we are creating a window of size 800 by 600 pixels. Here we are creating it, and we are originally filling it with color white. Because 255, 255, 255, three times in the RGB spectrum is basically white. Now, here we have a bunch of methods. The update and the draw method are called 40 times a second, because we have specified that the frame rate of our application should be 40. So 40 times a second, these two methods are called. These three methods here, key up, mouse up, and mouse motion, they are event methods. So anytime you press a key, this stuff here will be executed. So right now, it's just pass, which means basically do nothing. Mouse up. Uh, is when you click with a mouse, and mouse motion is when you move the mouse above the window. So you can see that in the draw method, what we are doing is we are filling the entire screen using the screen.fill function with white. So basically, 40 times a second, we are just clearing the entire screen to be white right now. So let's try to do something fun here. Let's try to give ourselves a seizure. <laughs> so here, Every 40th of a second, we're flashing the entire screen with white color. 
So basically these numbers here go from 0 to 255 indicating how much of red, green and blue you should have in your color. So let's try to flash the entire screen with a different color every single iteration. So here you see I'm importing from random, I'm importing uniform. Uniform is basically a function that returns a random number between two numbers. So instead of 255 here in the red component, let's generate a random number between 0 and 255. And the same thing here. And the same thing here. So now every single iteration, we are going to generate a random number here, here, and here. And we're going to basically get a random color, and we're going to flash the screen with that color. So save and run. And there you go, seizure. <laughs> uh, yeah. So at this point, I don't want you to be very concerned about all the details in these files. There's a little bit of a learning curve that we will have to go through, but we will go over it very slowly, and in just a few tutorials, you should have a much better understanding of how these methods interact and how to use them. Remember that you can get all the links and supplementary material from the website I'll link to in the video description. <clears throat> Alright, so just make sure that everything is working and head on to my second tutorial.